So let's let's look at those options and hopefully that'll be making it a little bit more clear. I'm gonna make a new tab this time. I'm gonna right click and duplicate the tab. Let's pull this to the front and, and I'm gonna do my sales receipt in here. Now, the one I'm gonna use this time, let's, let's use this uh, 420. So let's say we use that 420. So I'm gonna go up top and say, all right, let's have a new item. And let's say this time we're gonna say an invoice first. So let's enter an invoice. And let's say this is for customer four, just to change things up. Customer number four and boom and bam. And let's say this one is on, let's say 09. I think everything was in, let's say 10, 01. Uh, 22 let's say and then I'm gonna say I'm just gonna create a service item again let's just say hours and let's say the rate is five what did I say it was again I forgot 420 it's 420 man 420 okay so there we have it so so this is going to then increase accounts receivable by 420 the other side is going to go to revenue by 420 and we're going to be tracking the sub ledger for the customer number four so that we can receive the payment on it just like normal on the invoice this would happen of course before we had the the receipt of the payment that we're tying out to in the bank fee so this would be the first thing that happens in our scenario in our story so we're going to say save it and close it boom and so then the next thing so now we can check that out if i go to my balance sheet and run it i'm going to say okay there's the uh, checking account, there's the accounts receivable, accounts receivable, there's the 420 invoice, boom, shaka laka. All right, and then the other side, if I go back on up, is on the income statement, income statement, services, and if I go into that, there's the 420 there, okay, going back up, and then if I go to the first tab, and I track this internally, I can go to my sales, my customers, close up the ham boogie, and down to customer number four, we've got our invoice. The next th thing we would expect to happen is to receive the payment. By the way, if you're in the business view, where's that located? It's under the get paid and pay area, and then the customers on the left. So the next thing you would expect is the receive payment option. Last time we connected the the deposit that cleared the bank directly to the invoice. This time I'm gonna record the receive payment and then try to connect the bank feed from there. So we can also find, by the way, that open invoice, we might track it another way by going to sales. And then, uh, and then you might go to all sales and then sort your invoices this way by say the open invoices. So that's another way that you could track that, which is in a little slightly different place on the business view that's under bookkeeping and then transactions and then all sales. That's where it is on the business view. Okay, so given that, then we could make our receive payment. So let's do that. So now we're gonna say, okay, we got paid. We're gonna get paid by it. So we're gonna say, all right, got the money. Let's say it happened on the 10-2, let's say. And let's say that we got uh, whatever you know, cash, let's just say it was a, a check, let's say. Now the options are at this point in time, we can put it directly into the checking account, right? We can put it into the checking account, which means we're gonna have an increase to the checking account for which is gonna be recorded, not with a deposit, but a received payment and a decrease to the accounts receivable. The received payment will decrease accounts receivable. That's like the defining factor of the form. Or we can put it into this clearing account, which is called payments to deposit and then make the deposit into the checking account. Now, normally when you put it into payments to deposit, one reason you do that is once again, because you might have multiple items that are being received possibly with cash or possibly by credit card, which are gonna be grouped together by the credit card company or you when you make the physical deposit into the bank. And therefore you're gonna have that clearing account to help you to tie out what goes into your checking account, not only in terms of total dollar amount, but the units of dollars so that you can do the, the checking to the bank account 
possibly with the bank feeds to help you out with the bank reconciliation. So if that were the case, then I couldn't, I couldn't really tie the bank feed to the receive payment. I would have to actually make the physical, the deposit in my system so that I can do that grouping thing. But you also might say, well, if I'm going to tie the bank feeds to the receive payments, maybe I'm just going to put it into the payments to deposit as another double check. So when I get to the bank feeds, the bank feeds will take it out of payments to deposit and move it into the checking account. So it'll still record a transaction. So let's just see what that would look like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this. See, what are you talking about for crying out loud? Okay, let's just see what I'm talking about here. I'll, I'll show you. So I'm gonna go up top and we're gonna say, then this is gonna decrease the accounts receivable. So if I go into the accounts receivable, we've got a decrease there for the payment. That's good. The other side didn't go into the checking account yet. We put it into this clearing account, which is the same as undeposited funds in the desktop view. And there's the 420 payment. So nothing happened to cash because, ca I mean, the income statement, because income was impacted when we did the invoice. Now, normally, if you were going to make a deposit, then if I hit the plus button and we're going to say the next step would be to make a deposit in our flow chart here. If I was going to make it not with the bank fees, but just enter a deposit, you've got this like list so that if there were multiple payment items, you can group them together so that it will be recorded in your checking account in the same grouping as what's going to be on the bank statement. Because if you got multiple cash deposits or multiple credit card deposits, you want to put them into your checking account in the same grouping as they're going to show on the bank statement. That's kind of like the point. But, uh, but now I'm going to say, instead of doing that, I'm going to say, instead of doing that, why did it, what was that? I don't, I just want to log out of this deposit form. We're going to try to connect the bank feed to it to record that transaction, which should move it from here to the checking account. 